Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal y-axis. Now, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up so that we create more content like this. And don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified each time we post new videos. Now, let's get right into it. Okay guys, so we are giving this shape and we want to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal y-axis. Now, we already found the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. If you haven't watched that video yet, I will leave the link above there in case you guys want to check it out. But the steps that we used for that problem, we're going to use the same exact steps for this problem. The only difference is that instead of the x-axis, we're going to use now the y-axis. So with that information, why don't you guys give this problem a try and I will see you in a little bit. So to solve for this problem, we're going to use the parallel axis theorem and we are also going to use the centroid. Now we already solved the centroid for this problem. Again, if you haven't watched that video yet, I will leave the link above there. Make sure that you guys watch that video first. Find the centroid because we're going to need it to solve for the moment of inertia about the centroidal y-axis. Now, the next step is, is to go to the reference manual and grab the equations for the rectangle and the circle. So let's do that. So here we are giving the equation, so we're going to use b cubed h over 12 for the rectangle because we need iyc, right? And then if we go to the circle, we're going to use pi a to the power 4 over 4. So this is the equation we're going to use. So here we're going to have b cubed h over 12 plus the area for the rectangle, which is just b times h times d x squared we're going to go over this in a little bit and then we have minus guys don't forget minus because here we have the circle inside the rectangle then we have pi a to the power 4 over 4 a remember is the radius so make sure you guys use the radius not the diameter and then we have minus the area for the circle is just pi a squared times dx squared okay now let's start plugging the numbers so this here is going to be b this is the height. So B is going to be 11. We're going to cube it and then we're going to, we're going to multiply it by H, which is 7, and then divide it by 12. Then we're going to have plus the area, which is 11 times 7 times DX squared. Now, what is DX? Well, DX is going to be the distance from the centroid of the rectangle to the centroid of the whole shape. Now, the centroid of the rectangle is just going to be half of 11, right? So let's just say it's going to be somewhere here. The centroid of the whole shape is 5.6. So it's going to be somewhere here, okay? So the centroid of the rectangle is at 5.5 and then the centroid of the whole shape is 5.6. This distance is going to be dx. So we're going to do 5.6 minus 5.5 and then we're going to square this term. Then we have minus pi times r, which is two, we're going to raise it to the power 4 and then divide by 4. And then we're going to have minus pi times r squared, so which is going to be 2 squared times dx. Now, again, dx is going to be the distance from the centroid of the circle to the centroid of the whole shape. Now, the centroid of the circle has to be referenced back to the datum, right? So, which means it's going to be this distance from here all the way to the centroid of the circle, which we covered when we solved for the centroid. So it's going to be three plus two, which is five. So since the centroid of the circle is at five, okay? Now, the centroid of the whole shape, again, is 5.6. That one doesn't change. So dx is going to be this distance here. So we're gonna do 5.6, and then minus five, and then we're going to square the whole term, okay? Now, if you guys plug in these numbers, you're going to get 760, and this is gonna have the units of inch to the power four. So this is going to be the moment of inertia about the centroidal y-axis. Now, if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be D. So that's it guys for today's video. Now let us know in the comments below what would you like to see next and also don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Make sure that you guys share this video with your friends that might find it helpful and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your studying and I will see you soon. A la prochaine. Oh yeah,